Hey guys, welcome back to another electronics and more solar related video. The other day I was on OfferUp looking for some things and of course I had to browse the solar section and I came across this LG, it was brand new on the crate, 400 watt monocrystalline module. It's a 40 volt module. It was only $190. So what I want to do in this video is we're going to test the power output. I'll use my Max Oak power station. It has an MPPT charge controller. We're going to measure light intensity on the panel. And then after I do that, I want to see what kind of loads, 120 volt loads, tools and small appliances, that we can power directly off that panel using a DC to DC step up converter or a boost converter. And as you can see, the light intensity measurement is right around 78.5 to 79,000 lux. Okay, the Max Oak power station is now connected up, and we can take a look at the input power from the solar panel. Just gonna hold my hand here so you don't have a glare. And you can see it's around 364 watts. A few minutes ago it was 367. You have to realize that the panel is probably at a 50 degree angle to the sun. So in the summer when the sun is pretty straight up, I should expect a full 400 out of this panel. The DC to DC converter that I'm going to use is the one you see right here. It's the exact same one that was used in my bicycle generator video. If you have not seen that video, be sure to click on the link at the end of this video. This one will take an input voltage between, I think, 8 and 60 volts and boost it from 10 to 120 volts. So I have it set right now at 115 volt DC and I think the current is set for, let's see, 5 amps. I hope you can see that, 5 amps and push that button that's now active keep in mind the efficiency of this module is around 85 percent unlike other ones that are 92 to 95 percent but i can't complain too much because i only paid 20 bucks now the interesting thing about this is sometimes the power comes on instantly and sometimes it comes on soft start the voltage will build straight up to where it stops at the set voltage which in this case is 115 volts Okay, let's get started testing some loads. We're going to start low and move higher. And as I'm testing each one, you'll be able to see the voltage. Hopefully, it's a red display. It's very hard to see. The input voltage from the solar panel, as well as the input current using the clamp meter on the left. The first thing is this LED bulb. It's equivalent to a 100-watt incandescent. And that powered up really quickly. And you can see the input current at the clamp is right around 290 milliamps. Voltage at 115, and the current is 60 milliamps. Okay, let's move on up now to a 100 watt incandescent. Okay, let's power it up. And you can see it started a little gradual, and now it's full brightness. You can see at the clamp we're drawing 2.85 amps and 115 volts is showing at the converter and input voltage of the solar panel is right around 43.3 okay this is a 120 volt rotary tool like a dremel and it's a universal motor so it will work with dc right. and as you just saw the input current from the panel was 550 milliamps the voltage was 115 160 milliamp output and 44.5 volts was the input voltage from the solar panel. This one says 120 volts, 3.9 amps, 50 to 60 hertz. Let's power it up. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's try again, cutting a piece of wood. So if you ever had a problem that your inverter failed, you could always use one of these inexpensive boost modules to use your small power tools. Okay, let's go on to the next thing now. Here we go with the blender.
And as you just saw, it was very close to that 115 volt output, 1.3 amps, and the input current was just a little lower than 5 amps. The input voltage from the panel dropped very little. Okay, let's try the Porter cable drill. It does draw a lot more current than this panel can supply, but let's see, maybe we can drill a hole through something. And as you just saw, it couldn't make it up to that 115. It stopped around 86.5 volts. The output current at that voltage was right around 2.15 amps. Input current from the panel was right around 5.8, and the voltage of the panel did start to drop down. Okay, let's give it a try. And as you can see, if I keep going, it's not going to be a problem. It's already through about two and a half inches. Didn't take time at all. So even though we don't have full voltage, we're still able to use the drill to drill through concrete. Okay, now let's try this 150 watt halogen lamp. Let's plug it in, see what happens. And we are right now at 115 volts, full power, four amps, and 1.17 amps on the power output at 115 volts. Panel voltage 44.8, output current from the panel 4.15. Now I'd like to see what the maximum output is for this panel with this DC converter board. So I added 40 watts extra on top of the 150. We're going to plug it in and see if it can handle it. Okay, with the 150 and 40 watt together, the output voltage is right around 108.5 volts. Let's take a look at the current. 1.45 amps. As we all know, a highly efficient sine wave inverter is generally the way to go, but if you only have one 40 watt solar module, a DC to DC converter like this one, or one that's even more efficient, can come in extremely handy for powering resistive or universal motors. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.